Hi guys, it's Paul from emails.co.uk. Um, inbox review of Tamiya's 132 F4U-1 Corsair, the Burke Cage. Um, very excited because this is my next video build for your models. Um, highly anticipated kit. It's a beautiful kit. Um, not long released in the UK. Probably just over a week now, I think. Uh, very excited to be building this one. So today, um, it's an inbox review of it. I can't build a kit and not review it, so this is my inbox review. There's a couple of other reviews out there, so I'm not in direct competition with them. I'm just reviewing it because I'm going to be building it. So, nice large Tamiya box. Lovely box art, as always, on the front. Just get a few parts out of the way for now. We'll come back to them all later. Um, prep it to one side. So, typical size Tamiya sprues, typical colour Tamiya plastic as well. I'm not sure how many sprues are, there's at least, there's over a dozen in there easily. Uh, absolutely beautiful mouldings, the details very, very crisp. The riveting detail is absolutely superb. I don't know if my camera's going to be able to get in close enough. There you go. See all the riveting detail on the edge. Absolutely superb, crisp. Very crisp panel lines, very nicely detailed. Across the top of what looks like the fuselage, there you go. Very, very nice mouldings. Obviously, you know, up to time as usual. Quality on their 132 kits, absolutely superb. As always, no flash. You really are getting a quality kit. Um, Available with me models.co.uk, I think it retails about £107 in the UK. Absolutely beautifully moulded, um, as always. Not to disappoint, this is the first 132 scale I will actually be building. Um, I do have Tamiya's 132 Mustang in my stash. Um, the funny enough was going to be my next build, but since I've got this, next build for myself I say, since I've got this, this has jumped right up, top of the queue because I really look forward to building this. As you can see, fantastic detail on the wing sections. Again, the riveting is just absolutely superb. Level of details, very, very nice. No problems whatsoever. No flash, as you'd hope on a kit this viable, but absolutely fantastic. I'm really, really impressed by that level of detail on the riveting. Absolutely superb. It's going to build a very, very nice detail kit. Without a shadow, without this, two sprues. Obviously, we've got quite a few to get through, so I'm not going to linger too long on them all. Don't want to be dragging on all day. Like I said, there are other reviews out there, so I'm not trying to compete with those. I just want to review the parts before we build them. Again, various different parts. Any of the thinner parts, very, very crisp. Fantastic. Absolutely amazing level of detail. Fuselage halves. This is something we can linger over a little bit. Again, the level of detail. Absolutely phenomenal. Riveting is so crisp. Really, really impressed by that. Very, very nice. This is quite a wide fuselage on the F4U. Um, very, very nice. Rather impressed by that, to say the least. Um, we've got the engine cowling, which I believe in this one. It's over here somewhere. Yep, there is a clear part as well. So basically, we have the same parts in duplicate in clear so what that allows you to do is obviously because you can fully detail the engine when I say detail paint up you can you know you can super detail if you wanted to is that you can then show it off so you can display a fully painted but with clear parts so as you can see they are mirrors of each other not quite sure why but they're not I think it's been said in other reviews they're not crystal clear parts that you can see they've got an almost Frosted appearance, bit of a shame really, it would have been like it to be crystal clear. But it still gives you that option of going for that sprue 
or the more traditional one that you paint. Um, again, love the details, very, very nice. Really is crisp. So, nice little option to give you in the kit. You know, you, you can choose if you want to pursue the, the clearer part of shaft engine. Um, I know on the likes of uh, the Spitfire and that, some of the panels are actually removable. I'm not sure if they are on this. I haven't looked into it deep enough yet. There's a bag of little goodies over there, so there'll be magnets in there if it is. Um, I'm not quite sure. I'm not going to speculate on that. We'll wait till we build it and we'll find out for ourselves. Again, undercarriage. Beautifully crisp. Just riveting. It's absolutely phenomenal. I'm really, really impressed by that riveting. So how many screws is that now? Two, four, six, about eight. Seven, eight sprues. Landing gear. Again, all the little thin parts like that there, if I zoom in. Very, very crisp. I mean, thin parts like that. Not, not really hard to do, but to get them in that detail without any flash or imperfections, that's quite impressive. So there's our figure, it's also nice to get, we'll get to him in a minute. I'll zoom us out again. Like I say, not my favourite part of doing this, I'm not a kit reviewer, I don't mind reviewing products. But kit reviewing isn't my forte, but like I say, I can't build it, not review it, so I've got to have a look for all the kit. Um, we've got various tail sections. Not 100% sure what the other parts are, but again, very crisply done. Can't see any real problems there at all. Absolutely beautifully moulded. Grab a few of those. There's all the little bits and bobs. Certainly get some sprues for your money, that's for sure. So again, I think this is a duplicate of what we had before. It's very similar to a sprue we've already looked at. Got the instrument panel there, which obviously has its decals and the clear part to make it look more realistic. We've got a twin pack of sprues that are identical in here. So we've got the prop blades, more tail sections by the look of it. And again, the props look very nice. Very nicely detailed landing gear, wheels. I think you get rubber tyres with this, I've just seen. You do. So, again, nice little touch. Some people don't like rubber tyres, but prefer resin. I don't mind the look of rubber, to be honest. I'm not going to replace anything in this. I'm even going to try and use the um, original decals with it. I've replaced them with Mustang with Aftermarket just because they want to do the red tail scheme. But for this, I'm going to use the actual box decals and hopefully we won't have any problems with them. Touch wood. Um, so, yeah, two identical parts, landing gear. Sorry, wheels, uh, propellers and what have you. So again, no problems there whatsoever. More parts of the cockpit, which more have seen of the, um, the cockpit, it's gonna be a work of art on its own. So again, beautiful moulding. There's a switch gear, and there's absolutely stunned if we can see that there. You see all the individual switches. Um, buttons and what have you, very very nicely detailed. Various other dials and what have you. So you certainly do get what you you pay for with these kits. I know they're not cheap, but the level of detail is absolutely stunning. Control levers and what have you, absolutely beautiful. Very very nice kit. And we're on to the one of the last. The yeah, actual grey sprues, which is all the engine parts. So I'll zoom out first so you can get an overall view. So we've got exhausts, the actual engine themselves, various parts. Very, very nice. The exhaust outlets are like semi semi hollow, I can open up a little bit of a, a pin vice and a drill bit, but the engine parts stunningly detailed, very very nice 
as to the exhaust. Again, not one hint of flash anywhere, which is good and what you'd expect my kit of this quality. If I zoom into the actual engine part, get the camera to focus. Very, very crisply detailed. Very, very nice indeed. Really, really nice quality mouldings. Clear parts, the canopy sections, and also the instrument glass. There's a decal in there that goes onto the back of that. You put it through onto the grey part we just showed, and that gives you the, the glass impression. The actual canopy parts. Very, very clear. You can see that there. Just put a fingerprint one, unfortunately. But both front screen and the, the mid screen are very, very crisp. Very, very clear. So very nice ribbon de detail on those as well. Absolutely superb. Very impressed. Very, very nice indeed. So again, you know, you can just see the clear uh, clarity of those. You see my lamp reflecting. Fantastic. I'm going to put that one back in its bag. And as always, that will be stored separately along with the decals out of harm's way because we're going in out of the box all the time and we're worried about damaging the actual um, sprues or losing the part. I mean, the chance of losing one's very slim, but you always do stand that chance. Pilot figure. So look how well he's moulded. It's quite nice. First bit of flash though there, which is a shame, just on the pilot's headgear and on his oxygen hose as well, you can just see at the top there, it's the first bit of flash I've seen on the kit and around his neck, but easy to clean up, and there's actually a seam going over his headgear, but look at it, it's a shame again, but I guess you can't have it all, not everybody's going to use the actual the figures themselves, I'm in two minds too on that, I'm not sure. Don't know how I'm going to display this, whether I'll display it in flight or on its wheels. Um, we'll see, we'll play that by ear, but that's the first bit of flash. Shame that really. But nice to get a figure in there. Do bit as well. It's the stand, again. Nice to get a stand, not all kits get stands. But that's very rare these days, so... You can display it in flight. I remember right, there's a little plaque... Somewhere in amongst all the paperwork, so you can actually put their name the name of the plane on there. Right, first little bag of goodies, which is going to need a knife. So, I can see already one of Tamiya's trademark little screwdrivers. We've already got several of them. So in there, we've got a couple of pins, nut, bolt, and a rubber bushing. Well, not rubber bushing, but a soft plastic bushing. So I'm going to assume that something must be renewable for that pin, because that's what it'll be there for, basically. Rubber tyres, nicely detailed, but a big seam going all the way around them, which is a shame. If I zoom in, you can see. So that's going to be fun to clean up. But nice detail on the tread. Very nice indeed. And like I say, Tammy's little trademark crosshead screwdriver. So again, no problems there. We'll just pop those back in as well. Our first, well, the only, should I say, photo etch set. So we'll open this up and see what we get. So, what have we got in there? I'm not going to pretend to know all the parts because I never do. I'll figure it out when I come to build it what they are. The very nice detailed parts for the look of it. Very, very nice photo etch. Level of details, very nice. Just as you'd expect. So, again, no problems there whatsoever. Another nice part of the kit. Pop that in there. Careful of these parts because these are the ones that are likely to become damage through manhandling. And by the looks of it, this is still, oh, there is another, I knew there was another one. It's hiding at the back. So we've got the seat belts, which are very, very nice. 
various other parts so again can't fault that at all always nice to get photo it's even nicer when it's a quality like that it's very nice indeed so I'll put that in there so onto all the paperwork and what have you so the decal sheet which like I say I'm hoping to use it's not going to cause me any problems fingers crossed so again I expect the needs to be perfectly in register not many decals at all on that sheet the stencil sheets there so they're all the main decal markings should I say very crisp how thick they are I'm not quite sure they don't feel that thick which is nice so hopefully fingers crossed touch will we won't have any problems with those onto the stencil sheet again no problems there's the dials there so obviously they're back to front they go on the clear part which is then pushed into the housing itself again all in register very very nice decals hopefully it wouldn't cause any trouble or problems at all but really can't see any fault of those whatsoever this metallic plate style they look very very nice very nice indeed so fingers crossed no problems there I won't open this one up because we can see what it is name badge for the stand and the uh, canopy masking set which as always with Tamiya isn't cut out laser cut you've got to cut out yourself um, so for me if there's an aftermarket one which I assume there will be or there will be something similar usable I'll go for an aftermarket canopy masking set because I'm not sitting there cutting them out risking ruining a model for nothing we've got the colour call out for the camo scheme back out a bit so we've got a tritone colour there I have been looking into the colours um, they're all ANA colours um, which you can convert well they are FS colours um, still trying to find an actual set the only set I can find is from Russian manufacturers ACAN or ACAN depending on how you want to call them uh, Mr Hobby do one of the colours so I'm going to have to really re research into because the colour colour that's called for Tamiya sprays, the AS sprays and for this getting a camo scheme like that with those isn't going to be perfect uh, it's going to involve a lot of masking and I'd quite like to do this freehand so that's the scheme we'll be actually doing I think the other one's a paler blue scheme um, got a nice little booklet which runs through it's in multiple languages but gives a history of the aircraft uh, it's involved in the Korean War, uh, runs right through, showing the different model history, so you can see as the planes developed over time, features of the aircraft, obviously it's a folding wing aircraft, sadly Tammy don't give the option to do both, it's either or, and for me it would be wings out rather than in. Shows the engine, the wheel retraction, how that all works armaments right through to some reference shots of the exterior of the plane and very very handily the cockpit itself so that's a handy set of pictures to have and again some nice close-up pictures of the exterior the engine landing gear armaments the folded wings so again very nice touch to get this because part of the um, problem of doing aircraft especially for me I've never done an F4 before, I've never done uh, any carrier based aircraft before to be honest, well not World War 2 anyway so it's a new one for me so it's nice to get a little bit of um, not research but you know a bit of reference material for yourself instruction book is one of the thickest I've ever seen it's probably a good 8mm thick uh, we're up to over 100 steps there I've just seen 123 steps um, so this isn't going to be a short video build at all, I'm going to imagine we're going to be 12 plus parts on this, 12 half hour parts um, runs right through painting the um, the figure very very in-depth instructions 
really nice and clear. Every aspect's covered. So like I say, it's going to be quite an involved build on my part. Uh, really looking forward to it though. And as soon as this video is done, I'm going to, I will be making a start on this. So yeah, you get two different sections. You get the extended wing, or you can skip through and take it to the folded wings. So that's quite nice. So you can get to one, skip to the other. And it shows you the step to go. So you lose a good three mil of the book on each step. So not as daunting as it looks, but literally runs through every step very, very clearly. That engine's going to be absolutely fantastic. I can see Mr. Hobby Buffalo paint being used there. So the most of that. Again, right down to the cockpit, which is where we'll be starting. And again, you've got marking options, painting, Tammy's normal warnings and modelling tips. It's just a shame it doesn't give you the actual Tammy don't do an actual shade of paint for this. They may well do it. I know they brought out the RAF colours for the um, Spitfire, so hopefully. For some of you later modellers after me, Tammy may bring out the actual colours in there, Tammy XF range. But for now, I'm going to have to make do looking elsewhere. But yeah, that's certainly one in-depth instruction book. Absolutely fantastic. Really looking forward to this kit. Uh, like I say, I don't pretend to be a decent reviewer at all. Uh, it's not my forte, I prefer building. Uh, I, well, I don't mind reviewing products, but kits aren't my forte at all so please excuse me if it's been boring as hell to watch um, but we'll be back with part one of this very soon because I'm very eager to get it going but we are going to have a lot of parts to this as we go through also if you're on an international scale modeler I'm going to do a full build log of this on our forum um, so there'll literally be pictures of every step it'll be a bit more involved with the build picture wise because um, it'll show every step along the way as I do with all my kits, um, but we'll also have the videos as well on the way through. So paulpmemodels.co.uk, um, have a look on emails, Facebook page and YouTube channel uh, for all the other videos I've done in the past, and also have a look on International Scale Model for any updates, sign up, register, email or sponsor our monthly prize draw, you can win various uh, model kits I'm having just by putting your name down. So it's well worth joining us, www.internationalscalemodel.com, uh, have a look. And check out our e-models uh, website, sorry, uh, where this kit's available. Like I said, it's £107 in the UK. Um, but the looks of it, it's going to be a fantastic kit, so certainly get one yourselves. And I look forward to building it. So I'll see you soon for part one. Uh, take care. Thanks for watching.